Oh, you had to make it two, didn't you? Oh, Just yeah. had to do two. Had to. Welcome to D for Diving's YouTube channel, and today we're launching our new podcast, and we're going to be looking over the next 20 minutes or so about some topical information that's going on in the world of scuba diving around the world. I'm Gary, uh, one of the owners here at DFA Diving, and um, with me here also is... Johnny. I'm a dive master here at DFA. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so let's cut straight in. First thing, um, it is mid-November, it's 2021, and right now is DEMA. Mmm, the great success it's been this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking at some of the press reports and looking at some of the uh, announcements that are coming out, it seems as though most of the presentations are now being done virtually uh, due mm. to low attendance numbers I mean I don't know of anybody uh, who has actually gone to DEMA this year so DEMA is in no. Vegas DEMA is the Diving Equipment and Manufacturers Association and it's a big trade association big trade show that happens every year in the US this this year it's in Vegas um, mm. but with Nevada and with pandemic and with travel restrictions and concerns and nervousness I'm, the turnout's not been great. No, I saw a photo this morning from the Henderson stand. Um, now, whether it was a photo from before they set anything up, or whether it's an opening day photo, but I think they go with before they set it. All yeah, up. I'd be interested to see if there are any of you guys have been to Dima this year and uh, have got uh, you know photos of the Henderson stand, perhaps, or some of the other stands that are there. Uh, that'll be, be really interesting to see what, what, what those thoughts are. Now, I personally really love DEMA. It's a good opportunity to go and meet people. It's a good opportunity to meet with manufacturers or retailers and just get an idea of what's going on in the industry. Um, the training agencies also do a great show um, and talk about products, talk about development, and do training updates. And, it, it, you know, as a dive professional, um, it's something that's really worth going to at least once just to, to, to see what it's all about. Yeah, I'm going to be looking to go next year. Yeah? Yeah. Well, next year's Orlando. Um, I have to admit, I prefer Orlando. Um, yeah. yeah, it's um, it's a different, yeah, it's a, it's a nicer venue, I think, at Orlando. Um, plus, you've got um, a lot more around you. It's, you know, it's Orlando. Or when you're not there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, uh, when you go to Orlando, it's, it's, a, it's a tourist place. It's uh, not that Vegas isn't. Uh, but I just kind of felt as though uh, uh, Orlando was a little bit a little bit better for us. But also from a business perspective, it's on the right coast. Um, yeah. So to people who would go to Orlando are more likely to come to the Caribbean and come diving out here. Bloody chickens. I might pause this and see if I can chase the chickens off if they're going to keep doing that. Wow. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Right, brief interval to eradicate some chickens. We're back. The joys of uh, working and filming in an open air studio in the Caribbean. Open um, air studio, I like that. It, it sounds posh, doesn't it? It, it sounds. Does. Yeah, um, our studio lighting is natural, and uh, yeah. the cooling in our studio is also oh, sea yeah. breezes coming the fan in. The system Caribbean. is amazing. Yeah, I like the air conditioning system we've got here. Um, just the noise, noise isolation is a little bit challenging, particularly yeah. some of the trucks that go by and the chickens. And the fishermen. And the fishermen, okay. All right, let's go on to our next topic yes. of news. I've got... Uh, the news. The news. Um, so, one of the things that's kind of pertinent and relevant to me is I saw, I mean, it's about a month ago now, uh, maybe because we were starting to research and, yeah. and think about what we want to do for this. Did I mention about the cars and trucks going by? <laughs> Um, yeah, one of the things we were looking at about a month ago as we started to do our research for um, this program, this podcast, now damn chickens are back, um, Go is, is um, the case against Peter Sotis. Now, I'm not sure whether people will have heard of Peter Sotis or know who Peter Sotis is. Now, oh, I hadn't. Yeah. Now, Peter Sotis is the, was the owner of a, a scuba diving company in uh, Fort Lauderdale called Ad Helium, and He's the, he's the instructor who famously, infamously 
uh, was diving with Rob Stewart, yeah. the shark whisperer, uh, uh, videographer, and uh, and diver, when Rob unfortunately died. I know Peter Sotis and I know Emily Vlasum, uh, the, the two people who have just been indicted and prosecuted. Um, and I know them from, I did my rebreather diving uh, through them, um, now all my training and my instructor training. Um, now, I actually didn't use Peter or Emily for my training. I used a, a gentleman by the name of Doug Ebersol, but it was organized through Emily uh, and through Ad Helium. Yeah. Obviously, this was before I knew about Rob Stewart and, and all the issues that had gone on there. So, so it's your training after the whole Rob Stewart thing? At about the same time. Ooh. Um, so I'd booked it just prior to um, Rob having oh, the okay. issue. Um, and didn't necessarily put two and two together when I did my training because, uh, as I said, my training wasn't with Peter, my training wasn't with Emily, my training was with Doug Ebersol yeah. because the rebreather I was learning on was a kiss. And so Doug was the, the, the trainer um, that they had there, the freelance trainer that they had. So anyway, the case. Um, Peter and Emily have been charged and prosecuted for exporting rebreathers to Libya yeah now some people will say what's the big deal there except the US government had said you can't export them and had told them you can't export them yeah. um, now I've read some of the details and I followed it just purely because I'm interested in you know what's going on with some people I know and it does look as though they were trying to suggest that they were using a third-party intermediary in the UK and they didn't know they were going to uh, Libya yeah, of course they didn't yeah um, and I know that the US government's claim is that these are military spec rebreathers so all rebreathers are military spec really I mean they could be to, to the layman they could they be could deduced be as, I mean, as it, yeah yeah I mean I know that uh, Peter and the guys at Ad Helium would sell used rebreathers um, yeah. Uh, as they were selling new rebreathers too, and so I, I almost bought one. Um, so I suspect it was a regular used rebreather being sold, but at the end of the day, if you've been told... Was it only the one? It's two. For the fine and prison sentence, that is... Yes. And you'd, oh. you'd, you'd like to think that when you're now as high profile as Peter Sotis is, particularly with what's gone on with Rob Stewart, yeah. you just keep your head down. And at the point that somebody says, don't do it, you'd go, mm, I'll keep my head down. Yeah, probably um, shouldn't do this. Yeah. Oh. So anyway, Peter, Emily, good luck. Um, I, you know, I don't know enough about the case to be, to be able to say bad things or good things about what's gone on, but wow, that seems like quite a crazy thing to do. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you noticed though, changing subject completely. Right. National Geographic have just yes. launched their new film, their new docu-film. Yes, I've been meaning to watch it, actually. Yes, yes. So for people who haven't seen this, Being Cousteau uh, is a new Nat Geo uh, docu-film that's been uh, issued, been yeah. released. Uh, 22nd of October, I think it yeah. came out. Well worth a watch. If you're interested in the origins of, of scuba and you've got an interest in Jacques Cousteau, mm. I mean, of course, me growing up, I'm a little bit older than, a little teeny weeny bit older than Johnny. Had. Um, so I remember uh, Jacques Cousteau and uh, seeing him in black and white on TV as I was mm. growing up and, you know, being, being enthralled by uh, the images and, and yeah. the videos that we would see uh, uh, from, from back in the 1970s. Um, and so it's a really good film where it's, it's taking original footage from uh, that time. It's talking to people now, it's talking to his grandsons and following the, the whole origins of yeah. scuba. And it's, it's really, really yeah. quite fascinating. I mean, I still remember when I was going to dive when I was, what, 10, so a while back now, and watching Jack Gusto videos of the Thistle Gorm. The Thistle Gorm. Before I'd even dived it. The Thistle Gorm, yes. The, uh, the Thistlegorm gold is a good conspiracy theory. Uh, <laughs> I still think it was more good than bad. Yeah, um, so maybe, maybe that's something you might want to check out, is uh, the, uh, the, the theory of the Thistlegorm gold. Um, mm. Was it or wasn't it? Maybe you should check that one out. Yeah, was it there or was it not? Who knows, who knows? So, um, did you, you, to me? Did you uh, see the... Um, 
housing for iPhones and Androids that have come out. Is that the it? Sport Diver thing you yeah, sent me? Yeah. Yes, yes. No, um, I think it's quite cool actually. Why? Why do you think it's quite cool? Well, you know, traditional housings and stuff you get for an iPhone would be to five meters, and most of the time they're made out of flimsy plastic. Yep. This is actually a proper case, so it's the same kind housing. of thing as um, you get for your GoPro, and okay. it can go forty meters. So the, I fits, guess I guess the, the backup to that one majority of phones. I guess the backup to that one yeah. is Sport Diver. We're all aware of who Sport Diver are. They have launched a camera housing for mobile phones. Um, it's depth rated to 130 feet or 40 meters. Yeah. Um, and with the Sport Diver um, software, allows you full functionality of the camera for photo or video. Um, and 300 bucks. I mean, seems like yeah. a really good deal for... The downside, though, is that you would, if you've got a fancy iPhone, be yeah. taking about 1,500 bucks of phone to 40 meters. And that's my concern. That's the bit where yeah. I look at it and I go, this is a cracking idea because your phone's got a good camera on it and you don't In most then... most the phone camera is going to be better than the GoPro or whatever yeah. you're using otherwise. And, and on the premise that, that if you've got a decent iPhone or you've got a decent Android phone, um, 300 bucks now gets you a dive housing um, and allows you to fully yeah. use your, your phone for that. But 300 bucks is less than the cost of a GoPro and I would... I'm with you. I'd argue that your your, your iPhone or your, your Android um, phone has probably got as good as, if not better, camera yeah. than, than your GoPro. My concern, though, add that 300 bucks to your iPhone 27 XR Lux. Yeah. Um, Whichever one they're on now. Yeah, you're up to you're up to nearly two grand's worth of, of gear you're taking yeah. down. And, and you lose your phone. It floods. You lose your phone. You lose your camera. You lose everything. I... I mm, Brilliant. Or if your phone's not actually that great like mine, about 60 quid off eBay. Yeah. I'd say... Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Now, I'd be interested to see uh, how they how they perform on the market, how, and I'll look forward to having somebody coming down with one. Yeah. I, I, think I will be interested to see it. Yeah, I think um, they've got potential to be very popular. Yeah. I mean, with my uh, 200 buck um, Android phone, I, I would be tempted to, to throw that in there yeah. um, and, and use that underwater um, and try and get a, a long... Uh, Wi-Fi dongle as well, so maybe I can oh, handle my messaging good. from under. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't want to be handling <laughs> messaging from underwater. But anyway, um, check it out, Sport Diver. We'll put a link in the description below to their housing. Yeah. Um, check it out, have a look. If you get one, drop down a comment below and let us know what your thoughts are. I'd be really interested to see uh, how you've used it and what the footage is like, what the app is like. Because um, yeah. I like actually just on that, I like the idea of having photos or video shot straight on your phone. And then using something like Dive Plus to do yeah, your editing, then straight the editing from straight that, on your straight phone onto a social media so if you wanted to do that. So or... you're missing out all of those steps of you know SD cards and transfers yeah. and, stuff. and and that's that's when it starts. And then if you're using a laptop or a computer that you need an SD card reader as well for yeah. that's another cost you're saving exactly. On. And so it, it, and the cost of the SD cards and the having to charge up your camera batteries, da 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 da. All of this, it's, yeah. you know, you can certainly see that there's a real niche for it. It's just be careful with your 1500 buck iPhone 22 or wherever yeah. it is. Wherever um, it is now. Moving on from that and staying in tech news. Tech news. Something that is going to be exciting you. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Kiss have finally been bought out by the, um, is it Darkwater Group that owns XDeep and... It is Darkwater Group, yeah. as well? Yeah, so, so yes, I, I am. Now this is something that has been bubbling under and been worked on for a long time, so it's uh, Dark Water have officially taken over uh, Kiss Rebreathers. Um, so Mike, Kim, uh, and the team up at Kiss will still be um, um, running the operation. Um, Dark Water will just be um, adding in some additional um, support. I think I think it was counter lungs are going to be made in Poland and uh, yeah. I think um, it's more technical yeah. side of it that they're going to be sharing. Um, their technology with each other. Yeah. Now, I mean, you may have seen, may may not have seen. I'm a massive fan of Kiss rebreathers. Um, I yeah. learned to dive on a, on a Kiss rebreather. Um, for me personally, I like mechanical rebreathers because I know electronic rebreathers are a great idea. But out here on the islands, so it goes wrong. 
electronics go wrong a lot and, and the beauty of a KISS is, and the beauty of a mechanical rebreather is that I can strip it and I can take it apart and I can fix it here. Uh, I don't need to be sending anything back to the US or back to the UK to get serviced. Yeah. Um, so I like that. Um, the one thing that the dark water acquisition really, really excites me about is CE approval. Yes. Being able to have uh, KISS units um, CE kite marked for, for standards and quality and being able to be sold in the EU, that's a massive game changer for us. Um, massive game changer for them as it means that, that what I think is an excellent product will be able to be sold in the EU. But more importantly, more importantly, and this is where it really excites me, um, if the KISS Spirit and the KISS uh, Sidewinder and all the other rebreathers get CE approved, it means training agencies like SSI will start, approving, will start yeah. approving them for training. And in which case then, as a rebreather instructor, I'll be able to stay with one training agency for all of my uh, uh, yeah. training requirements. And that's one of those things where, oh, hallelujah, that'd be so, so nice. So I had contemplated switching from KISS. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Kim. Um, just purely because training agency things. But, but now that this is going on, probably not going to have to I'm not going to need to I'm not yeah. going to want to um, so uh, I'll be looking at putting uh, 2022 and order in for a couple more uh, Kiss Spirits and um, hopefully kickstarting the whole uh, rebreather uh, thing we have down here yeah so yes I'm happy I um, thought you would be even better you know hey throw it out there the review we've done of your ghost oh, uh, yeah. X Deep Ghost it's if we X could... Deep part that's exciting yeah Get a KISS rebreather with an XD uh, uh, backplate. Oh, oh, that would look so nice. Suits you, sir. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, are my pockets deep enough? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally, the last one I want to have a talk about today on the news um, and, uh, and, and here. Um, really interesting article I read on, mm. I think it was DiverNet, uh, I read it, um, uh, was about... Uh, an Israeli guy, um, yeah. got to check out his name, uh, Shlomi Katzin, um, found a sword. Yeah. I really like this one as well because it's in the um, big natural park or historical natural park that Israel have just opened. Yeah. Big area of land. Well, not land, but... Yeah, sea and yeah, stuff. But, but they've just opened up. And, and found it. So, so Shlomi um, was diving and he's found what looks to be a sword from a... Crusader that's probably been in the water for 900 years. It's a long time. For all of our American friends out there and all of our American and Canadian family out there, 900 years. Is that longer than they've been? Oh, hell yeah. 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 I thought it was. Yeah. Um, think of your oldest building and it's older than that. 900 <laughs> years this sword has been lost at sea. Um, Shlomi found it and more importantly, He's given it to the um, Israeli uh, Antiquities Authority, so it's going to be preserved and it's going to be uh, cleaned up, and yeah. people will be able to see this sword um, uh, when they go into the protected area yeah. in, uh, uh, in in of Haifa, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So awesome! I mean, it, for me, it's one of the things we all love the idea of treasure hunting and finding mm. something spectacular. Um, the best thing I've found is a cannonball, um, a huge, huge cannonball. Um, but to go out and find freaking longsword, I mean, I that's... mean, imagine pulling that back up onto the deck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, check this out, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, that would be that would certainly get a lot of people talking about. It. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, there's our podcast and our news yeah, for news. today. Uh, we're going to come back again in about two weeks' time with another news uh, section and looking for all the latest articles on yes. scuba diving that are affecting us around the world. Yeah, so if you guys have seen anything, send it in to us or leave a link down in the comments for it and we'll have a look. Maybe we'll talk about it next, well, next, next week, next time we're here. Next time we're here. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks very much. Um, thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for watching us. And more importantly, stay diving. Catch you soon. Catch you.